loyalty fans here again and i figure why not why not do this one as Halloween's on its way why not do Halloween, the original the classic now i remember doing the verses on that but i i actually did that was john tarpenter one well, my ability mine not plus my opinions and other people that my favorite one would have been john tarpenter's as we know, it was on a budget, very low, but they made a popular film and was a new look to the Slasser films and it created the shape and the rest is history. So where can I go with Halloween? Well, we all know it was inspired by a movie called Black Christmas. That's right, inspired by that. And at the time, at the time, Tom Tarpter has already did a student film called Dark Sty. Now, Dark Sty was a film that later influenced Alien, we all know that. But at the time, Don Tarpenter was too to make it bid. It was in 1976, he did Apollo Peace in 13, it was a very popular film. So we then decided why not do another idea. It was also inspired by Black Christmas. He also got, you could say, he got a bit inspired by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and the list goes on. So we decided to do his own version of A Mass Psychopath. Originally, he had ideas of, of making it. I do know if I get it right, I get it right. I do know what I was about to say. Black Christmas originally was going to use the idea Halloween, but that got stopped. So instead, he did it on top of the idea of a babysitter, babysitting, a psychopath breaks out of a mental siren and dies to get off, as well as killing people on the way. And that's how he wanted it. So, where can I go with it? It was based in 1963 at first, but let's not forget the music. I love, I love the music. You know that. I love the music in it. I think the music is iconic. It's a great bit of music. And it just is that fear factor. Then, as I said for the verses, it's based in 63 at first. You see the buccal murder of the sister, and it's more socky. But I love the idea of the time, the work, the lens with the mask comes on, and the peefy shot. And then, when you get the performance, it's a kid, a 12 year old boy, if I remember right, if we're writing one there. That was more socky, that really socked me out. I do know there was some deleted scenes, but deleted would be on the televised version where Dr. Yuma is trying to get the board to keep him in prison, he knows he's a threat, but they ignore him. And I remember saying it on the verses, he says, I lied to Michael, as a, as a kid, Michael, you food him, you food him, but you don't food me. I always loved that scene, it's sad to say it's not in the theatrical. And I say, um, there's a lot of people that are looking forward to play the role of Top Yuma, who Tom Tapley was looking for. I do you get a very good actor, remember him being the villain in Army um, Only Lift Tice. And the rest is is them. And I actually like the actor. I'm happy with Blanny name, but I like I like the actor. Very good actor. You know, he's been in loads, loads of films, may he rest. As Dr. Humus, I just think he is brilliant. The lines he says, evil, poor evil. The, the eyes, the devil's eyes. I just love, love those scenes. I think the scenes is iconic. I think the lines are iconic. I just love the scenes, the way he says that, the way he delivers them lines. I just think they're brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, as I said, the, the rest goes on. You have Jamie Lee Turtis, a, a big break in the movie business, as we all know, Stan at Lee's daughter, the mother and psycho. And she gets an iconic role as well. And like I say, two years later, he breaks out, he's from the mental siren, and he's attacking people. And I do actually like that, I like that idea. And actually, he's got his teenage girls. Oh, some of them slutty, some of them are not. Jamie the Turtles, he's like the dud girl. And you get the date bits with the PV sorts, the head bouncing up. And I do remember, as we all know, the history of the mast. The mast, but we all know, was a Captain T Turk mast. Paint it right, got it Michael Mathers, got it a day. And I love that. I just think it's very iconic, very cheap in mast. And like I say, some of the mergers now, compared to the later Halloween, I felt were a bit mild. But I think, I think Tom Tarpley wanted to make it more expensive, not as fucking blood and dull. Like the first kill, he gets the dirt, he stangles or finds it's not working, he gets a knife, he slits a throat. You don't see any blood, but that's what made the film. But it kills the Alstation. 
it's buccal, but it's not too in your face. I think the most messed up death scene is the one with the, the slutted uh, and he dangles her to death with the telephone wire. I thought that was a bit too buccal, but the well known actors there, we all remember the being in, in 1976, being in the film Carrie. And uh, yeah, I like that film as well. Very good film. And so on. So, like I say, you've got the day and the uh, Michael Steiner attacked in the church. Uh, Dr. Humus comes out, gets the dud, pew, 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 shoots him about, I think, like, right, I think it says he shoots him about five times, but five or three times. But when they did the second one, you only hear two gun socks when it's always an opening, but that would be for that. So, I do remember the scene, he falls to his death. And I love to see him at Jane the Church, he says, is that the Baldy man? And he says, as a matter of fact, it was. And then he's, he looks out the window, you don't see a body there. You see Effie breathing, and it ends with a... Do -do 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 and I love the scene. I really, really do love the scene. Tonal Presence, that's the name of the actor. Duh. Tonal Presence is the highlight of the film. And there, Dad, I think his name the last hour. Donald Pessence as Dr. Humors, I just love, love the lines he delivers. The eyes, the devil's eyes, evil, just poor evil. I think he delivers that well, I think he delivers that performance as Dr. Humors, and I think they've really got a good cast of actors there. They've really got a good cast of actors. And like I say, um, you can't go on. Sadly to say, though, some snotty student made a speech and had a go at on tap and did, how dare you make a fine film? Shut the fuck up. Seriously, man. It's a film. Get alive. Uh, but then they, I think he made a good film. You know what I mean? The Saint was made. It made it inspired a lot of other films, whether it be Friday the 13th, whether it makes some of the sequels, like Friday the 13th Part 2. It made a good film, you know what I mean? Like I say, it inspired Friday the 13th. It inspired a lot of other things. And, you know, the Slash of Eds was ahead of its time then. I mean, Slash of Films were never heard of. There was never were. You know I mean, you think of Slash of Films, you think of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I sort of look at Blackism as more of a psychological filler, even no, no, a psycho in the house. But, Halloween was the one that changed it all, and you know I mean, without that, you wouldn't have got another look. You know what I mean? Without that, you wouldn't have had the new look of films. You know what I mean? And that's what I love about Halloween. It was a definitely made film. I do know they made, like I say, a TV one with a few extra scenes here and there. Um, but Halloween was a new look in 1978. It changed the look of films. And I say, a couple of years later, they did Halloween 2, which I'll get to, which is a very unestimated sequel. Into them though, because it's a classic. Ain't star rating for me, but into them, be smart, be safe, and I'll see you later.